the Commodore 64. Now, I spent more hours than I can count in front of one of these machines during my formative years. When most kids were playing with an NES, I was using one of these. I had an Atari 2600, but it couldn't compare to what the Commodore 64 had to offer. This computer certainly withstood the test of time after being in existence for nearly 40 years, but its various components are definitely showing their age. Here we have an original Commodore 64 power supply, though it is a later revision. While it does technically still work, inside lurks a voltage regulator that's a ticking time bomb. If it fails while you're using it, this power supply will most likely damage several parts inside of the computer itself. So you really don't want to use one of these. You might say, I can just replace the voltage regulator with a new one. Well, these power supplies sold in North America were completely potted with epoxy, and here's an example of what one looks like on the inside. I was able to remove some of the mess with a hatchet of all things, and this is as far as I got. So you can see how fruitless it is trying to fix these bricks. The best solution is to either buy a power supply from one of the few people who make them, or you can build one yourself. I chose the latter route, and here are the major components that I plan on using. Before I continue, I want to note that I am not an expert in building something like this, but I have done considerable homework on the process. I suggest you do the same if you plan on building one yourself. I've already gone ahead and installed the power connectors to the back panel. I used my Dremel tool to cut a hole for the AC connector and drill a hole for the DIN connector. I'll talk a bit more a little later about using this connector instead of attaching a cable that goes to the C64 itself. First off, we have the transformer. This will convert mains voltage to the 9 volts AC that the computer requires. This is a Hammond brand transformer with the part number of 266K18. I picked it up from Mouser Electronics for about $17. It can be wired to work for the 120 volt standard that we have here in the United States, but it also can be configured to work with the 240 volt standard as well. The output can be wired in series to provide 18 volts, or you can wire it up in parallel for nine volts with a maximum output of three amps. This is more than enough juice for the Commodore 64 as well as a VIC-20 or a Commodore 128. Next, we have the five volt DC switching power supply. These can be picked up for about $8 US with free shipping from China via AliExpress.com. They're rated for up to 5 amps, which is more than enough. Unlike the power regulators in the Commodore 64's original power supply, this is unlikely to harm your computer if it fails. And here is the case that I'll be using. I also picked this up through AliExpress for about $14.50 US. It'll be able to contain all of the components and it has some vents to help disperse any heat. Now let's talk about that DIN connector. The reason I put this here instead of just wiring in an output cable is so that the power supply can also work for a Commodore 128, which requires a special square connector. All that I need to do is use the proper cable for whatever computer that I'm using. The seven pin DIN connector that the C64 uses also works for the VIC-20. Here is a test of the transformer to make sure that it's working properly. Now, it does put out 10.5 volts, which is more than we need, but that's fine and is quite normal when it's not under a load. The five volt switching power supply is fine at 5.07 volts. There is a trimmer that you could adjust if you want to adjust things to be a little bit more exact. Here's the back of the panel, all wired up and ready to go. Now, all we need to do is mount everything inside the case. It's a little cramped, but everything fits inside without a problem. Here's a quick illustration on how everything is connected. Please excuse the improper use of colors here, but I think it gets the point across. The wall output will connect to both the switching power supply and the transformer. If you take a look at the switching power supply, L stands for live, N is for neutral, G of course is for ground. These need to be wired correctly. So it's important to do your research if you're building this sort of project and get it right. As far as I can tell, it doesn't matter how you wire things to the transformer, but I could be wrong. The output of the transformer goes to pins six and seven on the DIN connector. 
The positive side of the 5 volts DC goes to pin 5 and ground goes to pin 2. Here's a further illustration on the power connector on a Commodore 64 as well as a Commodore 128. I currently don't own a Commodore 128, but I hope to acquire one in the future. So I'll need this information for later. All that's left to do is to wire everything up. Instead of soldering each of the wires together, I'm going to use wire nuts to get everything connected. They're quite safe to use and it will make servicing the power supply much easier if I need to do so in the future. Now that everything is connected, it's time to make sure that I've done a good job. And I'll do that by measuring the output of the DIN connector. Well, 5 volts DC is exactly where it needs to be. and the output of our transformer for the 9 volts AC is good to go. The final step is to close everything up and see if it works with an actual Commodore 64. Success! I now have a robust power supply that has more than enough power for several models of Commodore computers, and it should last me for years to come. Thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions about my power supply build, please leave them in the comments. If you'd like to support the work that I do, please visit my Patreon link in the description. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Awesome.